Almighty God says, If people wish to become living beings and to bear testimony to God and to be approved of by God, then they must accept God's salvation. They must gladly submit to His judgment and chastisement and must gladly accept the pruning of God and being dealt with by Him. Only then will they be able to put all of the truths required by God into practice, and only then will they gain God's salvation and truly become living beings. Amen. Amen. Arrogance is the root of man's corrupt disposition. The more arrogant people are, the more liable they are to resist God. How serious is this problem? Not only do people with arrogant dispositions consider everyone else beneath them, but worst of all, they are even condescending toward God. Even though externally some people might appear to believe in God and follow Him, they do not treat Him as God at all. They always feel that they possess the truth and think the world of themselves. This is the essence and root of the arrogant disposition, and it comes from Satan. Therefore, the problem of arrogance must be resolved. Feeling that one is better than others, that is a trivial matter. The critical issue is that one's arrogant disposition prevents one from submitting to God, his rule and his arrangements. Such a person always feels inclined to compete with God for power over others. This sort of person does not revere God in the slightest, to say nothing of loving God or submitting to him. Amen. 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 This is a fact. That's right. Reading these words of God triggers some memories from my past. Back then I was arrogant and self-righteous. I had been a church leader for a handful of years. I'd done some work and suffered a bit, and resolved some issues in my duty. So I used this to my advantage and ignored others. In time, I was dealt with and disciplined, and through the judgment of God's words, I gained some awareness of my arrogant nature. I felt regret and self-hatred. So I practiced the truth and underwent some change. Thanks be to God. Years ago, I took on a church leadership role. I worked with Sister Lee, who'd just begun serving as a leader. The church deacons and group leaders were new to the faith, so their fellowship seemed shallow. I thought, I've believed longer than all of you, and I've been a leader for a while. I will have to play a major role here and make everyone see what experience can do. Therefore, I would charge to the front in any matter. And whenever church members were weak or had troubles with their duty, whenever something occurred that would hold up church work, in whatever thorny problem or issue others couldn't resolve, I would charge forward. The church's work started picking up after a while, and my brothers and sisters states improved. They could do their duties. They often came to me to fellowship on their problems and seek my opinion. I was quite pleased with myself, I'd look at all the work I'd done and think, without me at the helm, the church's work couldn't be progressing so well. Without my fellowship, the other states wouldn't have improved so much. It seems like I can grasp the truth and do practical work. Sister Lee later had to go back home to take care of some things, so I took on the church's work alone. I initially felt overwhelmed and looked to God for help. After every gathering, I took stock of how it had gone and offered my support to anyone in need. After some time, I saw that everyone was doing their duty as they should, and all of the church's work was going smoothly. I breathed a sigh of relief, and I couldn't help but feel very pleased with myself. I felt that I'd proven myself in my years of service, that I'd seen a lot and handled lots of problems, I'd done assorted work and could be independent. I figured I really was a pillar of the church. Especially in that period, when I'd been waking early and working into the night, without any complaints, I really felt I deserved some credit. Before I knew it, I became very self-satisfied. I didn't think that God's words judging man applied to me. When church members were in need, I didn't fellowship with them but would instead scold them and say, You've believed a while and still don't pursue the truth. How come you haven't changed? Sometimes, after fellowshipping, brothers and sisters were still confused. Dismissively, I'd reproach them. I would say, You know what to do, it's just you don't want to. 
They felt intimidated by me and didn't dare discuss their problems with me. Then Sister Liu was elected as a leader to work with me. I thought she hadn't been in the faith that long, and she might not understand some things. So I'd have to have the final say in church matters, be they large or small. I'd make a decision and have Sister Liu carry it out. Our leader once sent us a letter asking us to recommend someone for a certain duty. I knew this related to the work of God's house, so it called for discussion. But then I thought, I've done my duty in the church for a while. I know all about the brothers and sisters, so I can make the call. I made the decision without discussing it with Sister Liu, and then had her go set things up. Even though we served as church leaders together, I was treating her as though she were an underling. If I thought she didn't do a good job, I'd become upset with her. She became so negative and felt frustrated that she couldn't do her duty well. She'd become that way because of me, yet I still didn't reflect on myself. I increasingly felt I possessed the truth and performed my work well, so I had to manage the church's work. I grew more imperious and arrogant. When co-workers made suggestions during work discussions, I usually wouldn't seek at all, but just flat out shot them down. I thought, what could you know? Don't I know better after years as a leader? I ended up having the final say over everything in the church's work. God made situations to deal with me. I kept hitting walls in my duty. I began missing appointments and designating people I shouldn't. The leader pointed out the mistakes in my work and pruned me. Even after all this, I failed to reflect. I thought I just needed to pay more attention. A co-worker warned me. Shouldn't you reflect on why these problems have cropped up? I said with disdain, no one's perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. There's no need to reflect on everything. Some brothers and sisters asked me if I was all right. I'd reply that I was fine, but inside I thought, why would something be wrong? Even if I weren't fine, I could manage it. No need to worry. I've been a leader this long. Don't I grasp more truth? No matter how they cautioned me, I wouldn't listen. I was living within my corrupt disposition and my spirit grew darker. I started nodding off when I read God's words and had nothing to say in prayer. More and more problems started cropping up in church. I'd become blind. I lacked insight into problems and couldn't deal with them. Before long, the church had a survey and the brothers and sisters said I was arrogant and wouldn't accept the truth. They said I was a tyrant, that I'd scold and constrain them. I was dismissed as leader. On that day, the leader shared everyone's evaluations with me. I felt God venting his wrath at me through the brothers and sisters dealing with me. I felt like a rat, like I disgusted everyone and was even spurned by God. I couldn't grasp how I could have sunk so low. In my pain, I knelt down and prayed to God. Oh God, I've always thought that I was responsible in my church work and grasped some truth. I never thought that I'd have so many problems. In the eyes of the others, I'm an arrogant person who won't accept the truth. God, I do not know how I became this way. Please guide and enlighten me to know myself and understand your will. Amen. I then read these words from God. It would be best for you to dedicate more efforts to the truth of knowing the self. Why have you not found favor with God? Why is your disposition abominable to him? Why does your speech arouse his loathing? As soon as you have demonstrated a bit of loyalty, you sing your own praises, and you demand a reward for a small contribution, 
You look down upon others when you have shown a modicum of obedience and become contemptuous of God upon accomplishing some petty task. Those who perform their duty and those who do not. Those who lead and those who follow. Those who receive God and those who do not. Those who donate and those who do not. Those who preach and those who receive the word. And so on. All such men praise themselves. Do you not find this laughable? Knowing full well that you believe in God, you nevertheless cannot be compatible with God. Knowing full well that you are utterly without merit, you persist in boasting all the same. Do you not feel your sense has deteriorated to the point that you no longer have self-control? Do not think that you understand everything. I tell you, that all you have seen and experienced is insufficient for you to understand even a thousandth of my management plan. So why then do you act so haughty? That little bit of talent and tiny bit of knowledge you have are insufficient for Jesus to use in even a single second of his work. How much experience do you actually possess? What you have seen and all that you have heard in your lifetime and what you have imagined are less than the work I do in a single moment. You had best not nitpick and find fault. You can be as arrogant as you want, but you are nothing more than a creature, not even the equal of an ant. All that you hold within your belly is less than what is in an ant's belly. Do not think, just because you have gained some experience in seniority, that this entitles you to gesticulate wildly and talk big. Are not your experience and your seniority the product of the words I have uttered? Do you believe that they were in exchange for your own labor and toil? Amen. Amen. God's words revealed the truth of my state. Only once I was gutted did I start reflecting on myself. Having done my duty as a leader a few years, I thought that since I'd been one for a while, I was more capable than others and grasped more truth, that I was a pillar of the church and it couldn't do without me. When I achieved a bit in my duty, I thought I understood everything possessed the truth that I was superior. I thought years of faith and experience entitled me to being arrogant, and that I was on a higher rung than others. I'd ignore my brothers' and sisters' suggestions, much less seek or accept them. Even when they were caring toward me and asked about my state, I felt I was superior to them, so I could handle it and didn't need their help. When I discovered their faults and difficulties, I wouldn't fellowship on truth with them. I would snub them. They couldn't do right by me, so I scolded them. Therefore, church members felt negative and constrained. How was that doing my duty? It was doing evil. I showed a conceited satanic disposition. When God became flesh in the last days, expressing the truth to save man, he did perform amazing work, but he never showed off at all, nor presented himself as God. Instead, he was humble, quietly doing the work of salvation. Yes. I could see that God is so humble. But I, so deeply corrupted by Satan, full of its dispositions, thought so much of my abilities because I'd had faith for a while and had worked more and understood more doctrines than others did. I had elevated myself. I lacked any self-knowledge. I knew nothing of myself. And I was far too arrogant. I was so hideous. Yes. Having been exposed by God, I finally saw my true stature. I'd resolved some issues in my duty, only because of the Holy Spirit's work. Without His work and guidance, I was blind and understood nothing. I couldn't resolve my problems, much less the problems of others. Even so, I became overbearing. I was so arrogant. At last, I finally felt ashamed of my behavior. I then read these words of God. If you really possess the truth within you, the path you walk will naturally be the correct path. Without the truth, it is easy to do evil, and you will do it despite yourself. For example, if you had arrogance and conceit, you would find it impossible to keep from defying God. You would feel compelled to defy Him. You would not do it on purpose. 
You would do it under the domination of your arrogant and conceited nature. Your arrogance and conceit would make you look down on God and see Him as being of no account. They would cause you to exalt yourself. Constantly put yourself on display. And finally, sit in God's place and bear testimony for yourself. In the end, you would turn your own ideas, your own thinking, and your own notions into truths to be worshipped. See how much evil is done by people under the dominance of their arrogant and conceited nature. To resolve their evil acts, they must first resolve the problem of their nature. Without a change in disposition, it would not be possible to bring a fundamental resolution to this problem. Amen. Amen. After reading God's words, I saw, my arrogant nature was the root of my resistance to God. Driven by my arrogant nature, I took credit for the Holy Spirit's work whenever I had a bit of success in my duty. And then I would exalt myself. I believed myself to be a recipient of God's salvation. Yet I lacked self-knowledge. In my duty, I would flaunt my seniority, thinking of myself as better than others and lording over them. I used God's words to admonish others and wouldn't discuss things with the sister I worked with. I instead acted autocratically. I alone made decisions on important matters for the work of God's house. I reduced that sister to a figurehead and made my own empire in the church. My arrogance led me to disregard others, even God. I didn't seek truth when faced with issues. What's more, I took my own ideas as the truth and had others obey me. It reminded me of God giving power to the archangel to manage other angels in heaven. But in its conceit, it lost reason, feeling it was something special and wanting equal footing with God. As a result, it offended God, so God cursed it and cast it down from heaven. Now, God allowed me to work as a leader, to exalt and bear witness to Him in all things, so I could fellowship on the truth and help others to grasp the truth and submit to God. Right. But I neither sought truth nor performed my duty, according to God's requirements. Instead, I seized power, and I made everyone listen to and obey me. How was I different from the archangel? God arranged situations to block my way, and then warned me through my brothers and sisters, but I didn't accept that or reflect on myself. I was so rigid and rebellious. I had been so arrogant in my duty, stifling church members, causing them to be negative as well as passive. There was no progress in the church's work. My arrogant disposition caused all these things. Indeed. I have such a stubborn, arrogant nature. Without God harshly exposing me through church members and dismissing me, I'd have never self-reflected. If that had gone on, I'd have only done more evil. I'd have offended God's disposition and been cursed like the archangel. That's right. Just then, I grasped God's kind intentions. The reason he was doing all this was to stop my doing evil and allow me to repent. This was God protecting and saving me, and I gave thanks to God. Thanks Thank be God. to God. Thanks be to God. Once I was replaced, Sister Liu could do her duty normally. And from what others said, though the newly elected leader and deacons hadn't long been believers, when discussing work, no one clung to their own ideas, but instead turned to God, seeking the truth together. Everyone worked together, and the church's work picked up again. Thank, Thank God. Thank God. I was really ashamed to hear this. I thought church work couldn't go on without me. But faced with facts, I saw that the work of God's house is done by the Holy Spirit and can't be done by any person. Right. People cooperate and perform their duty. No matter how long we've believed in God, as long as we rely on God to seek and practice the truth in our duty, we'll have God's blessings. Doing my duty without seeking the truth, but arrogantly doing whatever I had wanted, had disgusted God. Without God's guidance, I lost the Holy Spirit's work and couldn't do anything. Yes. yes. 
I used to be utterly blinded by arrogance. Running rampant, haughtily ordering everyone around, constraining brothers and sisters, and I disrupted the work of the church. I was filled with self-reproach. I prayed to God. God, I've been blind and haven't known myself, always thinking I grasped more since I'd been a leader and was superior. My arrogance led me in my duty, which disrupted the work of your house. Oh God, I don't want to oppose you. I wish to truly repent. Amen. Amen. I then read this in God's words. You must know what kind of people I desire. Those who are impure are not permitted to enter into the kingdom. Those who are impure are not permitted to besmirch the holy ground, though you may have done much work and worked for many years. In the end, if you are still deplorably filthy, then it will be intolerable to the law of heaven that you wish to enter my kingdom. From the foundation of the world until today, never have I offered easy access to my kingdom to those who curry favor with me. This is a heavenly rule, and no one can break it. You must seek life. Today, those who will be made perfect are the same kind as Peter. They are those who seek changes in their own disposition and who are willing to bear testimony to God and perform their duty as a creature of God. Only people such as this will be made perfect. I decide the destination of each person, not on the basis of age, seniority, amount of suffering, and least of all, the degree to which they invite pity, but according to whether they possess the truth. There is no other choice but this. You must realize that all those who do not follow the will of God shall also be punished. This is an immutable fact. Amen. Amen. God's words were perfectly clear. God sets our outcomes, not by how long we've believed, how much we can preach or have worked, but by whether we pursue the truth and change our corrupt dispositions and do created beings' duties. These are the most crucial. Amen. Amen. I hadn't known God's righteous disposition. I had gained some experience serving as a leader, and I had had some success in my duty. I thought that if I kept this up, I'd be saved by God. So I didn't focus on being judged and dealt with by God. I brushed off seeking the truth in my duty to resolve my corrupt dispositions. So my life disposition hardly changed despite years of faith, and I was living by my satanic nature and resisting God. I saw that we can't truly know ourselves or repent to God if we don't pursue the truth. No matter how much we have worked or preached, Unless we change our disposition, we'll still be condemned by God. This is all determined by God's righteous disposition. Amen. Once I grasped God's will, I no longer took advantage of how long I had believed or worked, but focused on understanding God's words, reflecting on myself, and changing my dispositions. After that, I was given another duty. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. When working with church members, I was more humble. And when they raised different points of view, I sometimes still felt I was right and wanted them to listen. But I'd realize my arrogant disposition was resurfacing. So I would then pray to God to seek the truth with church members and engage in discussion. Brothers and sisters said I wasn't as arrogant as before, that I was more mature. Thank God. Thanks be to God. Hearing their assessment, was really moving for me. This had been achieved by the judgment and chastisement of God's words. Thanks Amen. be to God. Though I've not yet fully shed my arrogant disposition, and I'm still far from what God requires, I have seen God's love and salvation, and that God's work can transform and purify people. Amen. Amen. This kind of thing shows us the Yes, it does.